Welcome to the video, and it's such a nice, beautiful day. No, it's not a nice day. It's rainy, it's muddy, it's a mess. It's Illinois. What do you expect? start this video, I, I have a couple hens outside. Um, a lot of people's first thoughts about birds, um, chickens especially, is they don't like rain. Alright, look at these birds. It is raining outside. They're out eating their feed. They're being good birds. Birds don't really mind the rain. Like chickens, um, they're not a huge thing. They don't, they're not like afraid of rain or anything. Um, but they, as you can see, they stand outside in the rain. They don't care. Um, they have as you can see, I'm under a roof because I have my camera and it's not exactly waterproof, so I'm not trying to ruin my camera. But, um, but they have this roof and then they have their nice enclosure um, to go inside, but nope, they're out in the rain. Um, so first thing about chickens is you want to get a coop to where you know they're safe. You know that no predator is going to be able to get in. That includes minks, coyotes, raccoons, possums, skunk. Uh, other predators uh, in your area, I'm from Illinois, so we just have really coyotes, mink, and raccoons. So, you can see that this coop is um, a little advanced. It's, I'm inside the coop right now. Um, it's a little advanced. You don't need a coop this nice to have chickens. Uh, we used to raise peacocks, so this is kind of our peacock enclosure. It's really nice. Um, I can show you from the outside. Uh, I gotta step over the gate. I have a gate there so the goats can't get in. You've probably seen from some of my other videos, it's a nice little coop. It's a nice little run. It's a heavy duty wire. It's, ain't nothing gonna be breaking through this. I'll probably hit this thing with the tractor. The thing wouldn't move. Um, and I also have my little chicken tractor. Uh, that's for my meat birds. Um, I, I'll do a video on meat birds too. Not today because they're two different kinds of birds. So it's kinda, you know, I don't wanna mix the videos. I don't wanna make it extra long. So I'll do a video on meat birds too. Laying hens. Um, first to start is what breed do you want to raise? What breed of chicken do you want? What breed is the best laying breed, the best kind of chicken, the best mom, or whatever you're kind of looking for? Um, uh, but, um, depending on where you're from, I'm from northern Illinois, so we get mild winters, mild summers, um, mild spring, just mild weather in general rain lots and lots of rain depressing look at that mud mess lots and lots of rain what breeds do I raise you see I don't know if you guys know your chicken breeds or not I have um, buff Brahmas buff Brahmas red stars Easter eggers uh, cinnamon queens I have a bunch I have a healthy mix of birds um, the reason why I have a healthy mix hello ma'ams Hi guys. Hi guys. They're new to the farm. They just, they were probably, they got here probably about a couple weeks ago. Uh, they came from the city. I got, pe people didn't want them or they weren't supposed to have chickens. So I got a call saying, do you want three chickens? And I said, yes I do. Because they're free and because they're Buff Brahmas and I love Buff Brahmas. Uh, thing with Buff Brahmas, they do excellent in winter conditions. Um, summer they're not the best in, but they still do really well in the summer. They're not as bad. The only thing with Buff Brahmas, they are a meat, egg, and um, layer, layer breed. Mainly they're used for meat. One of the really, really good things about Buff Brahmas, if you're looking to homestead and to not, this is kind of, this is a really small, this is kind of a starting homestead. It's just kind of everything's starting. We're trying to be self-reliant, but it's just at the same time, um, we kind of raise it for fun, but we do self-rely off of our chickens. We we haven't bought chickens in probably about 10 years besides getting these free ones and uh, we got a we got our meat birds, but <coughs> So on that buff Brahmas are or buff Brahmas light Brahmas dark Brahmas They're all the same breed just different colors buff Brahmas are really really good for hatching their own babies They are extremely broody breed. They'll hatch their own chicks every year So that way you won't have to keep buying hens and keep replacing your flock every start to come out and eat now but you won't have to keep replacing your flock. You won't have to keep redoing it, buying hens because your other hens are getting too old. So 
mix a couple broody breeds in there. Um, you can research on breeds. You can there's uh Cochins, Brahmas. Uh, what else is there? I'm trying to think of other broody breeds off the top of my head. I also have Easter eggers. Easter eggers are extremely good. They're super efficient. Um, they hatch their own eggs. They like colorful eggs, which isn't like a plus. It, it's it's it, that's a cool thing, but it's not. It's, I don't want just green eggs. Like I'm not. I don't care what color egg as long as I know where it came from. I know that they came from my hens. They're happy. But thing with Easter eggers, they are really 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 efficient to have on a homestead. Reason being, they are like a gamey bird. They're uh, they're really slim. Let's see if I can get crazy. You can kind of see um, the brown, the brown like grayish brown ones are Easter eggers, along with this black one. Hi, Mama. Hi. Come here. I'm gonna borrow you. I borrowed her. I know you're not gonna like this. This is an Easter egg. Um, the thing with Easter eggers is you can see she's not having this. You can see with Easter eggers, they have a pea comb, no waddle, which makes it excellent in the winter to have. Because uh, if you have, it, like say you live in northern Illinois like I do, you have decent winters where it gets cold. Uh, Leghorns do absolutely terrible in Illinois. Uh, we've done Leghorns before. Their combs freeze, their waddles freeze, everything freezes, they get frostbit, it all falls off, and it just looks terrible. It looks like you abuse them. But they don't, it's just, that's just leghorns, they're not made for winter. They're made for, if you live in Texas, Arizona, or a warmer climate, they are great to have. But for me, they are not. Hi guys. So, Easter eggers are by far, I suggest, I highly suggest Easter eggers. They, um, all of ours have hatched their own chicks. I don't know about everybody else's, but all of ours have hatched their own babies. We have probably about four years. You can see Junior here. Junior, we call him Junior because we, uh, or JR. JR's chicken, if you guys don't know. Um, it's kind of a joke we have because uh, we were going to eat him, but we didn't. So he's here. He is actually an Easter Egger buttercup mix. He's half Bantam and half Easter Egger. You can see that he's got that waddle on him and everything. He's not super friendly, so I can't just go pick him up like I kid uh, some of these huns. So Easter eggers are probably the best to have in my suggestion. It's up to you. I'll show you some of their eggs. I, I haven't collected eggs yet eh, Focus You see the Easter egger this This egg uh, This egg is from one of our uh, light Brahmas. You can see it's a decent sized egg. It's a really nice egg adjust Really nice healthy egg. These are from today. This one was from one of our Easter egger crosses <laughs> we used to have a, a buff Brahma rooster, <clears throat> which is his great great grandpa. Because we have not, we didn't buy him. He was years and years of breeding, because our hens just always had their own chicks. That's one of my cinnamon queens. Or no, she's. Are you the cinnamon queen? I don't know. We have cinnamon queens, and we have red, no. She's out there. That's a red star. That's a red star. My cinnamon queen's out there. Cinnamon queens and red stars kind of look the same. Uh, cinnamon queens are a little bit lighter than red stars. But she, she's a good, she hasn't hatched her own chicks, but she was a good hen. But you can see the difference. She's got that comb, she's got that waddle. She doesn't have frostbite. She's only been here for probably about two years. She's only about two, three years old. She's not super old, but she's getting up there. <coughs> but all my other birds, my Easter eggers, everything else has those pea combs. I really, really favor the pea combs and not having waddles because they don't get frostbite. Um, they won't get them cut by other chickens. They won't get pecked. They won't start bleeding everywhere. So that's just my suggestion. Uh, Easter eggers work really, really well. They're a very lively breed. So if something gets in your coop, they fly a lot. They're very flighty birds. They're kind of skittish. Um, the one I picked, the black one I had, she's not so skittish because she came from the city. But all my other ones, are, they're not. Where's Crazy? Crazy is next. Crazy is the one with the... Uh, Gray tail, dark head, dark neck. That's crazy. She was one of the chicks last year. She's absolutely a crazy chicken. She does not want to be touched. She does not even want to be looked at. She is just not having it. So she's, they're very, very efficient to have. So we have our, one of our nest boxes out here. Um, that's just because, why not? I don't know why we put it out here. We just had it. And so that's what we did. <laughs> but you can see, we also have this door with a dog door in it. We have a clamp in it because we just put this in. So they learning to go in and out the dog door because it'll take them some time. But we just have our door that goes into the coop. Hello, ma'ams. 
You can see my nest box that I built. It's pretty cool. It's a nice little thing. And you see our coop goes way, way up there. Uh, this is, like I said, this was built for peacocks, not for chickens. Our chicken coop is actually, um, has quail in it right now. But we just, it, we, it's just, it's a little space. It's not very, it's not a very big coop. We have 10 chickens in it right now. <coughs> it's not a huge coop. It's just really small and basic. Um, most of, we don't really plan for them to really be inside unless it's absolutely terrible weather outside. That's the only time we plan for them to be in. But just, it's a nice little nest box too. I really like that nest box. It's really efficient. And we built it. I have to go in, open the door up. Sorry, you gotta take so long. Ugh. All right. You see they have a little decor. So that's the chicken coop from the inside of the barn. It's nice. We even we have our little decor. But this is like it's like we really open it up to get eggs. Look at that. We have some eggs. See? Let me just lock it back up. Turn the thing. I need to redo this. It's the lock's getting really bad on it. But that was just an old cabinet that I found on the side of the road that I transformed into a stacking coop. It's, it works really, really well. We just pushed it up against here, uh, screwed it to the frame of the chicken coop, and uh, we have that glass thing. Uh, we also found that too, which was this glass thing. It's really, it's really nice. It's really, really nice actually. But you could just do boards or plywood over it, cut holes through it, or you could do egg crates in it. You could do all kinds of things. I just have the glass because that's that's what we had at the moment and it actually fit perfect on this cabinet so I didn't plan that we just two things fit together so why not make it uh, one thing <laughs> instead of two small two things that we would probably never use for anything else so that's that's just kind of little our little chicken coop it works really well uh, what do chickens eat chickens eat anything we feed them all kinds of stuff we give them all of our table scraps that we have that the dogs won't eat, like uh, bread, pasta, they love, love pasta. Pasta is one of their favorite things. Um, we also, uh, for grain wise, we slop feed them. I'm gonna show you the slop feed. It's actually an organic mix. Uh, it has, this is a slop feed. We slop feed them and we also have them on like normal layer feed, but we don't, you see that we don't keep it really filled that much. You can see it's not really filled. They're all like, oh hey, food. Even though I just slopped that up. But the slop feed has it has soy, sorghum, corn, oats, barley, uh, a little bit of rice. What how is my slop feed made? Um when they brew beer, they use all of this grain to get that hoppy flavor, to get that nice flavor, and they use hops and they strain it through all this grain. They throw all of that grain away, they just throw it away. It's really, really good for livestock. We feed it to the cows, uh, pigs, uh, chickens, goats. I don't feed it to because it's too, uh, it'll make them bloat. Cows love it. We sprinkle a little powder corn on it for the cows and they just eat it right up. But the chickens love the slap feed too. They, they actually love it. Ducks love it too. Uh, we raise our turkeys and our meat birds on it every year. That's how I raise my meat birds because it's, uh, it's not super, super high in nutrients, but it's, um, it's really nice to have too because our meat birds if you feed Cornish uh, Meat producer they will get too fat and they'll have heart attacks. They won't get to a steady weight They'll grow too fast and then their legs will break. They'll have heart attacks. They'll just get all kinds of problems So we slowly feed them. We don't just pile them up We, we feed them this grain and then they slowly build up they slowly get better and this grain the, the meat from that is really really nice It's a really nice meat even though it's a slower meat it's it's way better than uh, what you would buy from the store. So if you guys have a brewery around you, uh, ask them about the brewery grain. Ask them. We call it brewery grain because it is brewery grain. We get it from a brewery. They just throw it all away. We pick up buckets and barrels and all kinds of stuff from it. Uh, we have another farm down the road that does it too. She has she uses most of it. Uh, we don't use a whole lot of it just because we don't have a whole lot. She has a lot more than us to feed. She has probably like four or five hundred chickens and she feeds them all that. That's all she feeds them. <coughs> we just have a couple. Uh, we used to have probably about 20 to 25 laying hens and then uh, we got a new dog and he got in here and he killed almost all of our chickens. And the only ones that survived were the Easter Eggers. And, and well, the Red Stars we got after that. But the Easter Eggers were the only ones that survived. 
because they're a super gamey bird. They like they fly, they're really fast, they're really efficient. They're just really nice birds to have in case if you do have predators or something. Uh, they like to roost very, very high. Uh, all of our Easter eggers, they roost on the very, very top of the coop. You saw how tall that coop was. They go all the way up there. That coop goes all the way up to the roof. Oh, here comes the rain. Gotta love it. So that's just kind of everything that we do with our laying hens. There's really, chickens are pretty easy. If you really, really want predator protection, I have our chick coops inside the goat pen. Um, so it's we have four strain hot wire around it anyway. So we don't have to worry about coyotes or anything because it's four strain hot wire. And then we have goats and we have our dogs that run the property. So we don't really worry about coyotes with them. It's more towards mink we gotta worry about. We haven't had a mink, but I don't plan on having a mink because they are terrible. They will just kill everything. They won't even take, they'll eat like two of them and kill like 50 of them. So like ours is all reinforced. So really there's no way a mink could get in here. It probably could find a way mink are very smart. Oh, it's really coming down now. But if you do your chicken coop, those, we have our frame of our chicken coop with railroad ties. They are railroad ties that we dug down about a foot. We put rock and then quick cement under that and then the railroad ties on top of it. And then we built up our coop. So in case if something did like a coyote or a fox, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, or a coyote or a fox were to get in, it couldn't dig under the coop because it would just dig, it had to dig down about two feet and it'd get to like big rocks, like they're not small rocks. You can kind of see some of them that are laying around along the perimeter. Those are just some of the rocks that we, uh, didn't get buried right. But yeah, our chickens don't have a lot of grass in here right now because they, um, it rain, it's been raining for the past like week, just nonstop. So it's just, it, it all swamped and then the chickens were messing with it and scratching it up, eating all those worms. But they go out every day. We lock, the, we lock them up at night. We just shut that door at night just in case if something were to come in here. But like I said, we have that fence around it. That fence has probably saved a lot of our birds. Uh, we put that fence up right after that dog, our, our dog would say the dog, our dog, our own dog was killing everything. And we didn't even know he was killing everything. That's what makes us mad is because we didn't know it until we went underneath the porch and we found all the chickens all buried, half decomposed, chewed on, and guess who came out? The dog, which is Red, which I don't know where he is right now. He's he's doing Red things. He, his name's Red, so he's probably running around with his ball or something. That he's, he's goofy, but he's a Doberman doodle. Who mixes a Doberman and a doodle? He's really interesting, but we're not talking about dogs. We're talking about chickens. Um, what else should I cover on chickens? I'm trying to think. Feed. Uh, grass, free ranging, free ranging. It's really easy. It's really easy to do. Lock your chickens in a coop, get them used to their environment, to the coop where they're going to be sleeping. The way chickens think, if they don't die the first night, then that's where they go. That's kind of, if they haven't died there, then that's where they're going to go, basically. Uh, we've raised chickens in little uh, calf hutches. It's just, or something like that. We used to have a bunch of them. We used to have breeders out. We used to have a bunch of chickens out here. But, like I said, the dog, and then everything aged out. We used to do Rhode Island Reds, but Rhode Island Reds don't hatch their own chicks. But they are a heritage breed, if you are interested in heritage breeds. But Rhode Island Reds, they're not really known for hatching their own chicks. So if you're looking for something that'll be efficient, that'll keep having babies and keep resupplying your hens and laying hens so you have fresh hens all the time, I'm gonna suggest Easter Eggers or Buff Brahmas. Easter Eggers are just all around great breed, great in the summer, great in the winter. They're a gamey breed. They're not much of a meat breed, but if you want to do a meat breed that hatches their own babies, that's a good layer, that would be the Brahma. Brahmas, Cochins aren't really, they're not known for laying. Buff Brahmas are kind of just an all around breed. They just kind of do it, they do it all. They're a nice breed to have. They're just a little bit bigger. So if something were to get in here, those guys would probably be the very first ones to go. So it's kind of like, eh. they're, they look, they're like targets. Plus the Easter Eggers are kind of like a wild color. They're kind of like a tan color. They don't stick out or like a, fluorescent chicken right there so it's kind of like that but free ranging is super easy it's just lock them in the coop for a couple like a month or so or whatever um, a lot of you are probably wondering when do you let your chickens out like if you were to start them from chicks normally to let them out to keep them out like these guys go in and out all day long they do what they want all day long and we lock them up at night but I have some pullets in here actually that <coughs> we have some Easter egger pullets. 
sorry, <laughs> I slipped. But we have some Easter egg pullets in here. Blah, 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 blah. If I can find them. Chicky chickies. Chicky chickies. Oh, there they are. They're all flopped down on the board. Chicky chickies. Yeah. Those are our Easter egg pullets. And our, some of my meat birds are over there. But yeah, they're they're super skittish. Like I said, they're very, very flighty. Um, I lock them in here until they're they're almost ready to go outside. They're only about three months old, so they'll they'll probably start free ranging here pretty soon. But they're gonna go out in the chicken tractor with the meat birds. Reason why I raise meat birds with, sorry, my camera's not adjusted. There it goes. The reason why I raise uh, like pullets with meat birds is because the pullets kind of enthuse them to go out because the po the Cornish don't really want to be by themselves. As you can kind of see, they already are. Hi guys, these guys are big. Look at that face, and they're all sloppy. That's just, it's Cornish. Like I said, they get this whole entire barn. They can go outside if they want. Um, I've only seen them go outside a couple times. They get this entire barn to run around, and they just sit in one spot, because they're, they're not made to do that stuff. They're made to eat and to live for three to four months and then die. It's kind of just how what their life intends of. So as you can see, they're, they're pretty lazy. But I'll do a whole video on meat birds and how to do it. I'm actually going to be ordering chicks here pretty soon. I have them coming next week, so I'll have. I just ordered 25 more chicks. Those guys are just about ready to. Those guys, right there, that one. He's just. They're just about ready to butcher and process. So I have somebody that's buying some of the meat, and I'm going to use a lot of it. Actually, most of it, probably. I have somebody buying uh, two of them from me, just because I'm doing it. I'm doing 25 more of them, and they're going to be out in the chicken tractor which is, is a nice little thing to have. I built that. It was really easy to build. It's just an A-frame. Just basically build a corner. That's all you gotta do, is just build a corner, put up some plywood and some chicken wire on it. Deep. But yeah, it's nice. We, I used, used to have a lot more of them, but I just, they got old. They started breaking, falling apart, rotting slowly. They had tin on them and everything. So it's just, they, I retired them. I'm done with them. So I just restart, rebuild. And I also do rabbits on them too. Chicken tractors and rabbits work really well too. But that's kind of chicken scenario. It's just laying hens are pretty easy. There's really not much to go over. It's just kind of the basic stuff. If you really are trying to start and you're looking for what breed do I want to raise, what, how do I do all this, what do I feed them? Basically, it's just up to you. Do what works for you. Um, you can feed them just regular grain if you want. Or um, ours, some like in the summer. We very rarely actually dump feed for the chickens. We just dump it for the cows because our cows get like barrels and barrels of that brewery green stuff and they get powdered corn and all that. And the chickens kind of just hang out with the cows and hang out with the goats. They just follow them around and wherever the grain is, they'll eat it. And then they come in here and eat all my rabbit food too, which I hate. I absolutely hate it. These guys are okay. These guys are too young to really like throw out and kick out. But all my free range hens, they come in here and they're like, oh, chicken food. And they get in here and they throw all my feed out, all the feed out in the aisle because rabbits spill, spill my feed. So, but you can even just raise them off that. I would still try to give them some grain though, just so they actually know, so they don't start roosting. Because some of ours, <coughs> one summer comes around, they roost with the cows, they roost with the goats. I don't really want them roosting with them because they're not going to stop them from getting killed by a fox. They'll just kind of stand there and be like, ooh. But they, they won't care. So I, I try to keep them in the coop. Try to keep them alive and healthy in the coop. But there's a lot of different ways to do it. Do what works for you. But that's just kind of a quick video on laying hens. There's really not a whole lot to them. It's just they're really easy to do. They're just selecting the breeds is probably the hardest part and actually getting a good setup. Just setting up a chicken coop. It's just that's the main part. I think the fence is shorting out. But just getting a nice coop where they're safe. Uh, I would do like what I have is I have the coop and I also have a run attached to it and then they free range. A lot of people have the coop and they, or they free range. The only problem with that is if you get homely or you're out doing chores or you just don't get time to lock them up, predators will come up and get them. So it's just, it's nice to have because sometimes I don't get out here till noon and to let them out to free range. So that way they can still go outside and get fresh air so that they're not locked in that chicken coop sitting in there pooping all over so I have to clean it. They can go outside at least and get some fresh air and sunlight and whatnot and bugs if they and eat their feed. But that's it for today's video. It was just kind of a small little thing. It's not a very hard thing to do is raise laying hens. Just 
get everything started, do what works for you. That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that, hit that subscribe button.